Hi, I just wanted to go over the basic setup of the the brand new Parasirius Air flight control unit. Uh, a lot of you guys have probably been looking at it as your first introduction to uh, the Parasirius of flight controllers. So I just thought I'd go through um, the basic setup for you. Now, if you've ordered it correctly, um, you will already have the code preloaded. Um, this is the actual code that I'm showing you right now, which I'm going to ignore uh, for the purposes of this video. I'll go through uh, some of the options you can set in code as an advanced video later. But first up, what I want to do is just show you, assuming you've got the right code loaded into your uh, Paris Air controller, um, what you need to do to get it working out of the box. So what I've got, I've already got it fitted to my airframe. I've got all of it wired up, the ESC's plugged in, and I've now powered it up. I've got a new model set up on my radio, and I'm going to plug in the USB, which should auto load the driver. Um, and if you have a Mac, it might tell you it's a keyboard, just close that window and keep going. The next thing I'm gonna do is open up the configuration software, the multi wii config, what we call the GUI, graphic user interface. This is the basic environment where we actually see what the board is doing. Okay, now the first thing we have to do is select the correct serial port, which in this case is this one here, USB modem and some serial number. So we're gonna collect, connect on that port, and I'm gonna wait just a second or two and then click on start. And now we have all the data coming in from our, our airboard air flight controller. Um, down here we've got a graphic representation of what's happening with the sensors. So if I move the airframe around, you can see all the data from the sensors changing. Okay. Um, and You've got over here another graphic representation of what's happening at a little artificial horizon and it also shows you what the role on the pitch of the airframe is doing at the moment. Okay, so that all connected and worked. So the tricky thing to do, basically you've got to do two things really to make it working. Um, on this particular example, I'm running a tricopter, but it doesn't matter whether what airframe type you're using, you basically go through the same procedure. Okay, the first thing we need to look at is this little window here. And what this is, is this is the various signals coming in from my radio. So what I need to do is firstly, I'm just gonna center up my throttle stick. And what I want, the first thing to do is make sure these top four channels, throttle, pitch, roll, and yaw, Firstly, you're working in the correct direction. So if I put throttle up and down, that's going the right way. I grab my elevator stick and I push forward. The slider goes up, I pull back, the slider goes down. Next, I go to my aileron stick, roll, roll. It goes right, it goes left. And finally, I go to my rudder and it goes right and it goes left. Okay, cool. So they're all in the right directions. If one of those doesn't go in the right direction, you go into the re into the um, reverse channel settings on your radio and reverse them until they're and reverse the appropriate channels till they're moving in the right direction. Second thing we want to do is go into sub trim and again center the sticks, which I've done, and we want all of these numbers to be 1500. Uh, now at the moment. Don't worry too much about the throttle because it doesn't really have a true center position, but I'm just gonna sort of line it up roughly what looks like it's about center. And that's a close enough to 1500. Pitch is perfect, roll is 1501 and yours is 1499. Now I know I won't get those numbers any better playing around with it. So one or two points either side of 1500 doesn't really matter, but if you can get them all lined up nicely with 1500, that's great. Okay, the next thing we need to do is the endpoints of the channel. So I'm gonna to go to low throttle. Now low, I want this number to be below 1095. 1094 is perfect. What you don't want is it sitting at 10, 1126. That's not gonna work for you. You want it 
as close to 1095 but beyond as you can get it and that's the low point now high point we want it just above 1905 or 1905 so the magic numbers to remember are 1500 for your middles 1095 for the low and 1905 for the top now you use uh, end points or travel adjust or depending on your radio the terms will be different to adjust the channel each channel to make sure that you've got the the correct range so i'm going to check pitch that goes to 1906 perfect and down to 1095 i'm going to check roll 1906 again 1094 it's beyond 1095 that's fine and finally your I'm going to go to all the way over is 1906 and all the way back is 1095. So I don't have to adjust those. This is actually a model memory that I've just copied from a previous Scarab. And I do actually double like to double check the throws and sometimes I find different receivers. You do have to adjust those slightly. The important thing is once you've set your endpoints, you come back and you make sure that your centers are all 1500 again. Some radios changing your endpoints will mess with your subtrim and sometimes it takes a little messing around to adjust those. Okay, the last thing I need to make sure, I've got here some switching channels. Now, depending on how you're wired, you will or won't get um, a certain number of switching channels. So these are just assigned to a switch. So again, I've got a low, a mid, and a high point. The numbers don't have to be quite as fussy. They're all working nicely for me, cool. All right, I haven't got aux three and four switched, but I've got aux one and aux two switched. So that's my radio setup done. You notice I actually haven't changed anything on the board itself, on the controller. This is just setting the radio up, that's all that is. Okay, so I'm making my radio have the right numbers to talk to the flight controller correctly. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is over here we've got this little matrix set up, little switching matrix. And what this is, is as I flip my flight control switches, I can select different options. So I've got one switch here, my aux one switch, you can see it flicking here. And what happens is in low position, I've got nothing set. It, set. And in the next two positions, I'm setting the barometer, the altitude hold to work. Okay. Um, why two positions? Well, I could just do it in one, but you know, in case I over flick it or go too far, doesn't matter. Um, that's just how I've set it. On the other flight, three position flight switch, aux two, I've set the default position and you set these things just by clicking on the box or unclicking on the box. So clicking on the box turns it on, clicking on the box turns it off. Sometimes you've got to get just the right spot with your mouse to actually get it to work. Okay. Um, in the default mode, I'm flying in angle mode. In the midpoint, I'm flying in horizon mode. And at the high point of the switch, there's nothing selected of those two, which means it's in full acrobatic mode. So basically what I've got is stable mode at one extreme of the switch, full acrobatic mode in the other, and horizon mode is sort of in between. It plays around in, it, if you're just flying around gently, it behaves like it's in stable mode angle. But if you really start throwing the sticks around, it go actually automatically switches over to um, acrobatic mode as it extremes. If you are just learning, what I recommend you do is actually set all three positions on that switch to angle mode. Now you notice nothing's changed. Nothing actually changes. None of the data here gets stored until I click here on right. And I can double check by clicking on read. And there we have those three switches. So now when I switch my switch, it always stays in angle mode. And if you're just beginning, that's what I actually recommend you do, is fly in angle mode. And then once you get used to it, more proficient, start playing with horizon mode. And um, 
and when you're really 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 out there you can start playing with um, full acrobatic mode okay one other thing you can do is low throttle right rudder you'll see the arm has lit up right low throttle left rudder and the arm turns off so I know I'm arming and disarming the board by the way while you're doing this you should have no props on the aircraft whatsoever the other thing you should do before uh, while you've got the GUI connected before you do anything before you go out to fly is calibrate the accelerometer make sure the airframe is level not moving and just click on that button and you'll see down here the graphics messing around and the numbers over here resetting and make sure you calibrate the accelerometer before you go and fly okay simple as that sometimes it won't actually um, unless you do okay over here's the PIDs that's how you actually tune the flight characteristics of the airframe this point in time the default PIDs are stunningly good with the air. I would not mess with any of these numbers whatsoever. But they're there. Come back to that when you've learned a bit more and you can start tuning um, the response of the airframe. But for the moment, all you really want to do is make sure these stick movements are correct. Set your switch matrix up so you, as you switch, and you can set this up any way you want. It's up to you. It's what feels comfortable when you're flying but um, basically how you want to switch it where you want to switch it it's entirely up to you okay if you have none of this selected it will only ever fly in full acrobatic mode nothing else will work okay um, that's basically it um, you don't have to do any more now later on I'll come back so I'm done so I'm just going to close that bit of software which disconnects that I'm going to unplug my USB, unplug my battery, and turn my radio off. Later on, I'll come back and I'll go through the code that's specific for um, the multi Wii Air. Um, but for now, if, as long as you brought the right code, you won't have to mess with this. It should, having done that setup using the graphic user interface, you don't have to do any more. Uh, enjoy flying your. Um, your rear flight controller. I'm starting to really love mine um, and I'll see you guys on the forum if you've got any questions. I'll catch you later.